On the 23rd of August 1942, the Axis powers, led by Nazi Germany, entered the Soviet city of Stalingrad. Hitler expected a quick victory, but almost five months of fighting later, the Battle of Stalingrad proved to be the beginning of the end for Hitler's Nazi Germany and was one of the bloodiest in the entire Second World War. At its end, there were almost two million casualties across both sides, and the average lifespan of a Soviet soldier in the battle was just 24 hours. But for the Nazis, who in the final months were forced to endure horrific conditions as temperatures plummeted and food ran out, they may have envied this quick death and longed for it instead. After the Nazis failed in their plans to take the Soviet Union and Moscow in 1941, Hitler changed his tactics. If they couldn't overrun the Soviets as they had done in most of Europe, they would instead weaken them by wrestling control of their vast oil fields in the Caucasus and knock an important industrial resource off the map. The Nazis sent an initial army of 270,000 and started the battle by dropping 1,000 tons of bombs on Stalingrad in the first 48 hours. Already, the city was turned to rubble, but the bombing would not stop for some time. Stalingrad, now modern-day Volgograd, sits on the prominent Volga River and was an industrial city containing a number of important factories. It had huge strategic importance to the Soviets in bringing oil reserves and food up from the south to the center. Hitler saw the capture and destruction of the city as one step in his efforts to crush the Soviet Union, but also as it bore the name of Soviet Premier Joseph Stalin, saw its defeat as a vital tool in propaganda. Stalin also knew the importance of the city, imagining the fall of Stalingrad as a costly blow to the Soviet psyche. Before the battle began, he moved quickly to ship out grain and cattle, leaving the city short of food before the battle began, but refused to save the 400,000 Stalingrad residents. Believing the presence of women and children would be a motivator to his troops, Stalin instead issued the Not a Step Back order, demanding his soldiers fight until their last breath or face execution by their own commanders. Meanwhile, the abandoned citizens who weren't working in the factories picked up rifles to join the fight. But Stalin wasn't alone in his disregard for human life. As the Nazis' quick victory was denied and the Soviets fought back, Hitler refused to surrender. Unable to supply his trapped army, he expected them to die with honor and gave instructions to fight until the last man. Such tactics used by both leaders resulted in one of the most horrific battles in history. The life of a soldier at Stalingrad was incredibly difficult and incredibly short. Initially, for the Nazi soldier at least, morale was high and they were hopeful that following victory in Stalingrad, the war itself may soon be over. In the first few weeks, gunfire was incessant. Bombs were dropped around the clock by the Luftwaffe, and the city was already in ruin. The Nazis' superior air force and artillery had pushed the Soviets back, and victory must have seemed a certainty. Life for the Soviet soldiers was brutal from the start. They feared the constant threat from above, the enemy in front of them, and their own commanders behind who they knew would shoot them if they retreated without order. The Luftwaffe completed some 1,000 bombing missions per day, wiping out entire infantries and turning the city into a flaming pile of rubble. Within the first month, the dead bodies lying in the streets were a constant obstacle to soldiers on both sides, and the stench of decay in the air was unspeakable. Despite the bombardment, progress for the Nazis was painfully slow. A month into the battle, the Nazi soldiers were still hopeful of a quick end to the fighting. The nature of the battle proved psychologically draining to both sides. Close quarters combat in the ruins of the city, often fighting for days over control of a small crumbling building and pushing back the enemy one street at a time. And while the Soviets were short on supplies, they were ordered as they moved back to burn large amounts of grain to prevent it falling in the hands of the Nazis. With all resources but soldiers stretched thin, the Soviets continued shipping in troops from the Volga River. Having to swim across wearing heavy equipment and carrying their rifles, many Soviet soldiers drowned, while many more were sent into battle with no gun, being told to take one from a fallen comrade instead. By November, the Nazis had finally reached the Volga. Having taken 90% of the city and cut off the river as planned, victory seemed in their grasp. Being well supplied via two airfields they had captured, 
Nazi soldiers remained in contact with loved ones at home, writing back and forth, and expecting to be back in time for Christmas. But as the Russian winter began to set in, the Luftwaffe became immobilized and unable to fly, and the bombing of Stalingrad finally eased. The Soviets had still managed to reinforce their troops and launched a substantial counterattack on the Nazi flank, continuing to throw bodies into battle until the tide finally started to turn. Unprepared for winter, the Nazi soldiers struggled in temperatures as low as minus 40 degrees Celsius. And by late November, they were encircled. From certain victory, they had to face the facts that they were suddenly cut off, running out of supplies, and unable to escape. They were ordered by Hitler to hold the Volga in preparation for a summer campaign while support came. But they were soon pushed back. Hitler recognized the campaign had failed, but the battle continued as he began to see the lives of his men as a way to bog down Soviet troops and resources, accepting that his troops would eventually be defeated. Soldiers on both sides were exhausted, with no food or water and no protection from the freezing temperatures. Many soldiers resorted to picking the meat from the bones of dead horses to survive, and many others resorted to cannibalism. Soldiers of every level were subject to the conditions. Even for those free from the harsh rigors of the close quarters combat, such as those used to supply the front lines with food, water, and medical supplies, every venture was a suicide mission. Snipers on both sides were deployed with great effect, hiding in the ruins and picking off enemy targets. But starving and barely able to move, let alone defend themselves, by December, many took no cover and stumbled into the open helplessly. Suffering from frostbite and disease due to freezing temperatures and lack of medical supplies to treat their wounds, the Nazis huddled in basements for safety and warmth, fearful of the Soviets, who they believed would execute them if they surrendered. Those who weren't gunned down succumbed to the unforgiving elements, with the dead dragged into the street and left to rot. With his forces helpless and broken into small pockets across the city, Hitler rejected two separate terms of surrender, wanting his men to hold out as long as possible and die in battle. But on the 2nd of February 1943, his commanders and remaining forces were captured and finally defeated, and the Battle of Stalingrad was over. With the battle at an end and the city's streets paved with the frozen bodies of Nazis and Soviets alike, the rigors for the Nazi soldier were still not over. Some were forced to either help rebuild the city, while others were marched on foot to labor camps. When the Second World War ended in 1945, very few were still alive to return home. Of the 400,000 Stalingrad residents prior to the invasion of the city, only 10,000 to 60,000 were still alive at the end. While for the troops, the Nazi casualties were between 650,000 and 970,000, depending on how far out of Stalingrad you include, while the Soviet casualties were as high as 1.1 million. For the Soviets, the average life expectancy for a soldier in Stalingrad was just 24 hours, and given the conditions, perhaps those were the lucky ones. While brutal for the soldiers, the battle's outcome was Hitler's greatest defeat, and a turning point in the Second World War, eventually leading to his fall in 1945, and the end of Nazi Germany. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more. Unlike the troops at Stalingrad, you're free to come and go as you please, but while you're here, why not check out another video?